Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Six Nations series. And I've got everyone's favourite pundit, Elko, with me again today. Elko, how are you? TT, you're too kind. I'm I'm good. It's the it's the best time of the year. Sixmas. Here we go. <laughs> Absolutely. And in this uh, in this episode, we're going to be looking at the opening match of this Six Nations Championship, which is down in Marseille on Friday night. France versus Ireland. Elko, how excited are you? Very excited. I'm a bit nervous, to be honest. Um, it's an interesting one, isn't it? It's it's two two teams um, who have gone through some huge trauma. I've had a bit of time to think about it. And um, both will be looking to get back on, on track. But I think whoever loses it is going to have a, a a long time to think about it. And, and um, yeah, it could be psychologically very, very tough. Yeah, you're alluding to the fact there that these are the two favourite teams in the tournament. And a lot of people are looking at this opening game as possibly the one that might decide it in the end. We shall see. Um, but we're going to start analysing what we think might happen by looking at the team selections, starting off with France. So here we go. This is France. Um, have you got... What are your thoughts, Elko? What are you seeing here with this French selection? Um, no massive surprises, really. Um, it's kind of what we we, we thought would ha happen. O obviously, the, the, the big hole um, with the, the general missing, but as we thought, Luke, who's come in, who's been playing extremely well with his with his half back partner so i think it's a it, it's a predictable um selection but that's not going to make it any easier for for farrell's men um to, to get anything out of these guys you know they're, they're so strong that front row straight away just shouts out at me um it will be interesting and we'll discuss i'm sure about scrums uh, shortly but um it's a very powerful front row yes you can argue that ireland has got just as powerful uh, front row, and that might equal each other out. But they, they're 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 a good team. It's good to see Ball back and 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 fit again, having had a few uh, injury problems. But they, it looks a very powerful team. And then obviously we've got some injection of madness um, in the back line from um, what we thought before about the club form uh, and the guys coming in. Um, it, it they look they look dangerous, and and also having the best kicker in the world, arguably at the moment, in Ramos a full back. It, it's it, it, as an Irishman, I'm worried, uh, you know, playing on a Friday night in Marseille, I'm, I'm a little bit worried, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I mean, I guess there was one slight surprise selection in Moafana getting picked on the wing ahead of Biel Biari, who's the rising superstar or one of the rising superstars of French rugby. Any ideas why you think that is? I mean, Moafana has played on the wing several times for France before. Any Do you think, uh, why, why now? I don't, it, it, yeah, it's a it, good point. Um, I don't know whether it's, he may have a little bit more physicality. Um, and um, I'm not sure if he's, is he going up against Nash? I think he left. Uh, yeah. Probably is, isn't he? So we know that Nash is very good in the air. He's proven that in the URC and, and the championship um, games. So potentially they think maybe there's going to be some, um, or, or they thought maybe that Farrell tactically would 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 target that wing with kicks potentially I don't know um so maybe that's why they've done that and then who better to bring on uh, to a pitch with tired bodies than than that uh, Biel Barry to, to come on and just be electric maybe that's how they're looking at it I don't, I'm not sure what are your thoughts yeah I mean I completely agree Murfana just looks like a, you know having played a lot of rugby in the centre probably defensively just a bit more solid as well and they just want to you know not lose anything in the opening stages in that respect. A couple of people I want to pick out in the forwards. My favourite player, Malvaca. Having spoken on the previous podcast when we spoke, I kind of alluded that he's, uh, you know, got all his set piece stuff nailed down, and he then went on to miss his first two line out throws for Toulouse <laughs> the following weekend. Um, but he's been picked, which I'm delighted about. And then just in the second row, they lose big man after big man to injury, and who do they call up? Paul Valencia. You know, just that tight head lock that they've had for a number of years. And you've got no doubt that he's going to be a huge physical presence when it comes to Friday evening. Yeah, he's an absolute beast. I, my memory of him most recently is, is sort of being taken off early and, and that stare and, and I'm, I'm, he's going to want to kill people. I think, I think it's going to be a, a big match between him and McCarthy in, in the second round for Ireland. Uh, he's a, a very physical, proud uh, man and, and he'll 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 come out firing. I think I think it is going to be a colossal fight up front. It, it has to be because 
whoever gets dominance up there is 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 going to win the game. I think, um, and uh, particularly at scrum time, um, uh, depending on what happens with the referee, I've I have no doubt that France are going to go after Ireland at um, at scrum time, no doubt at all, and and that and that line out, and um, well, depending on how much they kick the, the ball off, I think they're going to keep it in play a little bit, but. Uh, they they will go after Porter, um, and I think having Vilm say in there is 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 huge, uh, and and yet Malvaka love him and his and his mullet and what what a great uh, matchup with she and that's going to be two two absolute bangers of hookers that 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 play as well as you know do the the tight work well, but they'll want to get involved um, and 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 um, you know uh, take contact, but also uh, be selfless and look to take contact, but but move the ball on with it with a with a tip on. I think uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be cool with those two guys going out. Yeah, another detail in terms of the front row here, which I didn't realise until this week, was that Winnie Antonia was actually planning on retiring from international rugby, but has been convinced to carry on, which, you know, is huge, literally huge for France. Um, Okay, we've talked about the French selection there. Let's move on to Ireland. And you've mentioned his name already, and I think it is the single kind of biggest... Uh, maybe surprise, or it's the biggest, bold, boldest selection here, which is Joe McCarthy in the second row. I was so impressed with him, having watched uh, Leicester against Leinster a couple of weeks ago. He absolutely murdered around uh, Welford Road. He looked like a young... Um, God, the names escaped me now. The second row from South Africa. Um, and, yeah, he, w- he was amazing. So tell me your thoughts about Joe McCarthy, Elko. Yeah, to be honest, I'm not surprised at all. I think I think he would have been one of the first on the on the team sheet. His stats are, are through the roof. Uh, he was tearing down trees in in the um, the World Cup um, training squads. Um, a lot of people were, were were sort of thought he might sneak in towards the end as a starter, um, but he's he's been absolutely quality. He's very abrasive. Um, I think um, to have to have a a physical athlete like that that's homegrown is is quite unusual we normally have to sort of dip into project players and things like that to, to get such physicality he, he's he is a specimen um good rugby brain as well he is a little bit raw in terms of he, he, he will give away penalties and he'll give away penalties on friday night but i think the positives that he brings in terms of his work rate his physicality um, uh, his, his his ball carries as well i think i think far out away is that and he'll he'll get better as he as he learns. I mean, the only thing is, you know, let, let's go back to who we were just talking about a second ago, Vilm say, you know, th- they'll have his picture up on the wall going, who's this young book? And they will they will go for him as well, which will be really interesting. I think he's he's well able for it. Um and um I'm very excited to see him in a in an international get an international start. So I think, I'm not sure if it's his second, I think um he's he's been sort of benched before, but um pure class and has been spoken about for for some time for sure. Yeah, I've got to say, this matchup um, is what I'm most looking forward to on Friday night. I just think it's going to, it might epitomize the whole fixture. If he can stay controlled with that level of physicality, show a sort of a level of maturity, then it could be a, a really big night for him. Now, the rest of the forwards, I mean, it's it's kind of what we expected in a lot of ways. Uh, maybe Ty Byrne instead of Ryan would be the only thing, but just a lot of players that are very happy on the ball very happy to play with the ball in hand, very comfortable over the ball in defence, a lot of turnover players there. Um, what are you seeing? At, what's, uh, anything else you want to pick out in the forwards, Elko? Yeah, uh, well, well, I think holistically, uh, the, the selection has surprised me a little bit, mainly in terms of that he's gone for a 6-2 split. And I'm still trying to get my head around that. We'll get into where, where there might be weaknesses there. It is, it is weird. And he's he has said that he wants... Uh, an athletic pack to come on in the second half. Now, that's really interesting. Okay, so that means they're going to go at them. Probably why Van der Flyers uh, is, is starting there. That he'll, he'll just let give him free reign, and he will he will be like a little pocket assassin going going after everything. Um, but it, it kind of confuses me a little bit because if you're looking for an athletic pack to come on, then why have you put Ryan in there? I, I, I think he's a starter personally, um, although he has not been on form, and this is a huge blow. For, for Ryan, I think, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, he was been touted as potentially being the next captain. And since, since Matt Carley sort of um, put him on the naughty step, things have 
really kind of started to come off the rails, which is which is worrying for, for Ireland and for Leinster. Um, you've got to have Byrne in there or Ryan because they call the line outs, I think. Um, so it is it is an interesting, don't get me wrong, I think Byrne's epic. But if you're saying that you're going, you know, physically to, to go at these guys, then I, I would have thought you would have put Ryan in there and that would have been a very scary pack. Um, uh, you know, Ryan is a, is a bigger chap than, than Byrne, but there was a, some interesting stats came out during the week. And, and you know, if you just looked at uh, money ball and, and stats and ball carries and everything else, then Farrell has picked the two best second rows in in um, in Ireland at the moment. Um, special mention for, um, I don't know how you put it, but poor old Henderson, you know, uh, I guess it's indicative of, of what a horrific season Ulster are having. You know, no players... You've got a, a a British and Irish line there who who, who started against uh, New Zealand in the quarters, played exceptionally well. He's 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 not even in the squad, um, but you know on the positive side, that's that's I I don't think there's many complaints from Ulster supporters there. I think, in fairness, who would you drop him for? Uh, maybe Ryan. Um, weirdly, um, Bard's been playing awesome. So, um, yeah, it's a tough time for Ulster fans. Yeah, do, do you think that matters in terms of the overall Ireland squad? Is it important to have players from every province? This was a key thing that uh, came up in my mind because the first time I saw this Ireland team confirmed was by an Ulster supporter t- with a sort of like angry or sad face emoji kind of thing. Do you think it really matters? I think it matters for the sport in general because a, 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 if if Ulster are playing well, that, that's that's good for Ireland, right? Um, um, I, I don't I don't think it matters in terms of the selection because Farrell has got to pick the fifteen best players to start and then the bench. That's just you know obvi- that's obvious. Um, and if we were in different times where contractually you might have to have a certain amount of players, that would just daft. But I think what this does is it, it just puts a light on that province, and they are. Too good, too proud, and uh, a province not to be playing better and having more people in, and that. But unfortunately, it goes back. They've just got to be playing better. Um, no excuses. It's they're they're not playing well enough. Um, there's a few guys sort of on the on the outskirts of the squad, but does you know? It's not like a few years ago we were talking about maybe Cooney, who was really on form and 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 I think probably should have been given a go, but for some reason he didn't. But there's no players there really that are banging on the door um and and there should be um and i hope there will be um probably for next season yeah okay completely i completely agree okay let's look to the backs now and there's a well there's a few interesting things here i mean the obvious thing to talk about is uh johnny sexton retired and crowley has been selected as expected to have kind of first stab at the post sexton era the key thing here is will he be able to play and get people moving in the way that Sexton does? How do you see uh, that going? Yeah, I've, I've, I've very faith in him. and I think he's the right selection and I think uh, they've, they've, they've got to back him. I've not seen enough from, from either of the Byrne brothers. Uh, they, they, they tend to make mistakes. Tough though, isn't it? Uh, being behind um, such a huge personality for so long um I, I think it'd be fine the only thing that worries me a little bit that sometimes when he under when he's under pressure he does go off piste uh, and do his own thing but he's a bloody good player you know he's 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 played some really good stuff in in, in championship he's he's excellent and he and he can move around a little bit as well it, it's unfortunate that um ring rose is injured i think that's a huge massive thing for the game that ring rose isn't playing I, 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 it's um it's not good for Ireland at all. Uh, France will, I think, target that 13 channel and 13 and wing that seam because, you know, it's new combinations. It would have been great if the, if, if he, he could have come in with an established um, combination, which is tough. You know, um, it would have been sort of a Leinster combination and then just you, you put in that monster guy and you, and you go go with it. But he, he's he's an exceptional talent. I, I think he is one for the future um, unless the, the young kids... Um, Prendergast uh, comes through quicker than we think, uh, but but Ring Rose is is a massive loss. TC, it's it's huge. Yeah, I agree. I think um, 
Ring Rose for a number of years showed glimpses of being world class, but was never consistent, in my opinion. And I think the last two, three seasons, maybe he has be just become, you know, the elite outside centre. So so classy. However, you've not got a bad man there to replace him in in Henshaw. So I think um, it's it's a loss, obviously, but I think it could be a lot worse. Yeah, yeah. Look, Alex Henshaw's class. I just think he's a twelve, uh, and um, I would be attacking him. Uh, obviously, we've seen it before on on that sort of on an outside break. He, he, it's not that he's he's slower. I think it's just he, he he takes a little bit longer to get up to pace than Ringrose, and I think he over chases, which leaves it's susceptible to to balls back inside. Um, and it, it's weird. I, I'd love to know why that both those boys' in, injury profile is is so up and down. The reason Aki's in there, obviously, he's absolutely class and he's taken his opportunity, but he's always been there when the other guys have injured and then he's made the position his own. Um massive opportunity of course for Henshaw to to you know shut people like me up and 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 um absolutely nail us. And he's probably lucky that in fairness to the French 12 and 13, they they're more power players uh, and and sort of straight liners rather than a sort of I know Elliot Daly kind of Brian O'Driscoll outside break sort of sort of player. So so hopefully he'll be able to to hide and the wingers will stay close to him and, and, and help him out. But yeah, interesting. It, it also leaves us open massively to injury problems uh, in the, in the back line. And I'm the, the that's why the six, two thing is uh, risky. Yeah. Now, when we looked at the squad initially, you picked out Nash as being um, a very good young player. He's obviously uh, been selected here to start this game ahead of some more experienced people. Um, what what have you seen in Nash? Why did you pick him out originally, and why do you think he's been selected? I picked him out because he's he's been he's been playing very well for Munster on a team that's been decimated by injury. He's he's, he's stepped up to the plate, uh, and he's been he's been belied his years. You know, he looks he looks like he's got time in the ball. He looks pretty calm, um, and clearly is very strong in the air. I don't know if he played some Gaelic as a as a youngster, but he's he's super in the air, and and that's that's obviously a a massive weapon that Ireland have used in the, in the past. Um, I'm not sure how gas he is. He seems to always want to step inside. That's a confidence thing. Um, maybe we'll see something different. But he's 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 up against some um, some filthy uh, wingers this weekend. Um, so let 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 let's see. I personally maybe well, I thought Larmer was we were going to see Larmer in there just because he can cover 15. Maybe Nash can as well. I don't know, um, but um, yeah, he's he's a he's a good player, and I, I hope he does well. Why not? Let's chuck him in Marseille Friday night under the lights. What could go wrong? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Okay, let's talk about the game in just more general terms now. What I mean, this game over the past couple of Six Nations uh, tournaments has been absolutely epic. Both fixtures in recent years have been incredible. Following the World Cup with some slight disruption to teams, especially around key playmakers, DuPont and Sexton not being there. Do you think we're going to see another epic encounter down in Marseille on Friday night? Or do you think maybe it'll be a little bit more scrappy, a little bit more cagey, possibly some more errors? How do you see it going? No, I, th I think it's going to be mad. I think I think it's going to be two, two teams going out of desperate to win. Desperate to get over uh, um, the trauma of, of, of quarterfinal defeat, um, two teams that that, that could have won it, could have won it, could have, could have been the final. That certainly that that the Northern Hemisphere really were hoping for. I remember us talking about that um, during our pods at, at the World Cup. So, no, I, I think I think I also think France are going to go at it. I think the fact that it's in Marseille and they're on this kind of tour um, because of. Um, because uh, the, the the main place is is, is busy with them um, preparing for Olympics, um, I, I, I think they're gonna I think they're gonna throw the ball around. I think they're gonna play, um, and um, it's two teams that have it's very familiar, isn't it? You know, they're they they're, they're not going with a, you know a new cycle. It's very familiar players that we saw. I think Ireland are what, four players off the the, the team that finished uh, started against um, New Zealand. So I think these two teams will 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 go at it. Is it the the only thing that's not um, like Farrell for all for all he said is that you know, Ireland aren't going through a, a World Cup cycle. Um, they are at number ten, which is really interesting um, because they have to, and that's where I think it's going to be you know 
it's so intriguing to see how this young kid's going to go because France are going to come after him. <laughs> I, I have no doubt. Yeah, I really think um, I really think that performance could be the key to the whole fixture, how well Crowley goes. I'm pretty sure Luku's going to play well for France um, and, and, and provide, a, you know, an absolute uh, top performance at scrum half. Obviously not the same as DuPont, but I still think he's going to be very good. I think it's uh, the key thing is going to be Crowley. Um, what about any other key matchups? We kind of alluded to stuff in the front row and the second row. And is there any other? Yeah. Thing? Well, I think. Be... Yeah, I think I think so. Look, scrum time. I mean, I don't know what you think, but if I was the French scrum coach or the Ford's coach or Galtier, or whatever, I would be going after Porter, and I would be putting it on uh, Carl Dixon, the referee. I would just go and say, right, just bore in, just keep bringing him in, just keep bringing him in until. The crowd are going wild and the referee's got nowhere to go because, unfortunately, he's got rep, right? Um, as we saw in, in the court. It, it, Barnes went after him. You know, he had he, Barnes had a feeling in his head that he'd done an analysis and when Porter's under pressure, he follows in. So I think they're going to really, and, and Ireland are going to have to be really, really disciplined there um, and, um, you know, try and not, give away scrums in, in certain parts of the pitch. I think it's going to be, that's going to be a crucial, crucial part of the game. I, I think it's going to be like probably a one, a one, t- 10 points, maybe maximum kind of, kind of game. I think it's going to be closer than that, but the, these little things are going to, are going to be massive um, in there. Um, and I, I think the benches are going to be huge as well. Um, I'm, I'm what, where teams are at certain, you know, when they, when is he going to unload that bench? Um, Farrell, that is, um, that he says is going to be more athletic. Um, but after fitness, of course, will be huge. Yeah. Now, just a little, having played loose side myself, I've been in situations where the referee's got an idea of what's going on and you feel like it's wrong. You just have to ignore that. You have to just do what the referee wants. And sometimes that means not scrummaging as hard as you want to scrummage. Then it becomes a balancing act with team being passive and not giving penalties away, and also not going backwards. And it's so, so difficult. But I, I agree. I think that's what Porter is going to have to try and do on Friday night. So let's get down to it. Alco, what's your prediction? Who's going to win? By how much? What score are you going to go for? OK, I, I'm, I, I think with the selection... Um, the, the the missing player and the and the bench strength uh, and the fact that it's a home and the fact that they've got Ramos who's a proven goal kicker and we don't know if we've got a proven goal kicker or not I think France are gonna are gonna probably scratch it um, by plus seven. Wow, mate, I did not see that coming. <laughs> I'm gonna go I'm gonna go France as well, but I think it might be closer. I think it's going to be... I'm going to go 26-24 in a relatively high-scoring game. Yeah, I think we'll see some some barnstorming rugby. I hope we do. I, I think it will continue on from from what we saw in the two, in the two, the two big quarters. It's two big teams going at it. Um, I hope I'm wrong in terms of results. <laughs> we shall see. Well, let's hope for a, an amazing game as well. I'm sure we're going to see that. But what do you think at home? Do you think... We've picked out all the key matchups. Do you think there are any other players that are going to play a big role in this game that we haven't mentioned? And most importantly, who do you think is going to win and why? Let's have all of that in the comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. If you don't mind, it helps other people find it. And subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any of the rest of our episodes. Elko, thank you very much for your time today. Cheers, TT. Enjoy the game. And most importantly, Get out and play.